In the last two episodes, Peter described how he accidentally entered the world of amateur television in the early 1970s, noting this was in the days when affordable domestic video camera and videotape recorders did not exist. In this week's episode Peter explains his participation in CQTV award contacts including rare 16mm footage of the DX contacts, color 16mm film of a local radio amateur's microwave and television equipment, and describes a tour of GTV9 transmitter site. Peter also outlines some of the lectures and location demonstrations the local ATV operators gave in the mid-1970s. Hello, I'm Peter, and this is my story of my involvement in amateur television during the 1970s. Before colour. During 1977, I took some motion picture film uh, from the screen of the television monitor in Sunbury of Winston. As you can see, they were pretty average pictures, but uh, um, I thought they were wonderful. <laughs> no video recorders available to me at that point in time. And this became a, quite a permanent record of what uh, took place. Very snowy pictures, quite poor, but they were there. A block diagram which Winston used for a demonstration in Tasmania at some stage earlier. And you can see some caption cards of various uh, stations he had received. There's one of Greg's. And then a few days later, this happened. Most of the time the camera is running continuously. I stopped it here for a second or two, and then restarted. Watch the image. Not quite noise free, but not far from it. One of Winston's uh, favourite uh, caption cards. You can clearly see, yeah, up on the top right hand corner, you can clearly see VK7EM, can't you? We wanted to uh, record the time and date of this transmission discovered the clock was out by uh, 10 minutes or so and uh, Winston went in there and adjusted it as you could see and right at the end of this film you will see a piece of paper with the date on it. Conditions were obviously varying uh, through the evening. My memory is that this lasted for about an hour, uh, this contact back up again to a fairly um, strong signal, um, a bit of shutter problem there with the camera. And there's the date. All of this culminated in uh, and an award. <laughs> Winston applied for the new CQ TV award which uh, was available from the British Amateur TV Club and uh, uh, it was quite interesting that one contact um, uh, on my part gave me a bronze, uh, bronze award. VK3AUX is another interesting station uh, on the Melbourne scene. Jeff was a dispensing chemist and uh, he had been playing around with ATV since the early or since the mid 50s. He had a location on Mount Dandenong. The uh, house was down in Caulfield, but the residence on Mount Dandenong, right up on the top. 
And here are a couple of pictures I snapped of his uh, camera on the left and monitor on the right. This is the view out of the window. Unfortunately, this day the camera was really playing up. Um, that's some 10 gigahertz equipment he was playing around with. You can see the, sh the, the film was buckling in the camera. There's a close-up view of the uh, camera, his television camera. Unfortunately, all out of focus, but uh, that's the way it went. And there he is adjusting the camera control unit. We also did a transmission to the WIA, uh, the old headquarters building in um, Victoria Parade. Uh, this was a very tortuous uh, path. In fact, the, I understand that the receive antenna at 3WI was quite a few degrees off a direct bearing to Sunbury, and we understand that the signal received there, which was not great, really great, but it was there, um, was uh, bounced off the ICI building up the top end of the Melbourne city. And here is Greg, VK3YGB, um, explaining aspects of our system. And... Uh, whilst I was standing near the transmitter rack in the same room during that lecture in 1973. Some of the diagrams used for the, uh, uh, the presentation, block diagrams, there were quite a few other bits and pieces shown, but this is just the, the bare bones. Also, there was involvement with the Diggers Rest and Sunbury Scout groups um, with Amateur TV. Uh, here you can see my picture as received by uh, John uh, Buxton, um, 3YJB, and uh, a picture of his setup. Uh, I think this was actually at Dallas, uh, so it was down near Glenroy area, I think. Uh, and uh, there you can see my received picture, or part of it, and uh, he's just getting ready to transmit his uh, image. You can see the scout's head on the monitor down below. Various other caption cards used for particular purposes. Um, one was a, a Geelong demonstration. Uh, you could see a number of call signs there. Uh, we all went down there to Geelong to the ham fest. And uh, I can't give you the exact date, but uh, these were the stations that were active, uh, noticeably active on air uh, at that particular time. I think we're talking possibly um, mid-1970s, I think. Yeah, it'd be mid-1970s. And we also did a bit of work on 1200 megs with Les uh, 3ZBJ from Sunbury to Frankston. Transmitted a few movies, silent movies mainly. Uh, one was to Bob, VK3ZBB, who was uh, very much tied up with amateur satellites. He was down in Strathmore, got quite a good signal strength from me. And on the right-hand side, you can see Peter's uh, more recent, or, well, in those days, more recent caption card. The image up on the top left-hand corner is a frame from uh, that Bob snapped from his television set of um, part of the film that I was uh, showing at the time. And uh, here you can see on the top right-hand corner uh, the some of the setup here, including an old 35 millimeter motion picture projector. Obviously, I had an interest in. Uh, in movies and uh, such things at the time. Uh, you can see the camera on its stand looking down towards the f floodlit um, caption card and for some reason the TV set sitting on a, on, a, um, uh, on a stand there and up on the bench uh, you can just see the edge of the camera control unit. The transmitters are behind us. So that was, yeah, 1971, that was fairly early on. 
Uh, down the bottom left-hand corner is an interesting story. When we visited Channel 9's transmitter at Mount Dandenong, we were sort of taken right around the whole place, and I noticed behind one of the racks of equipment was this this box with uh, flywire all over it, bronze flywire, and I asked the question, well, what's all that about? Because it didn't seem to be connected to anything. And uh, one of the guys got all excited and said, oh, he said, that's what we use to transmit the cricket between um, Adelaide and Melbourne on. Uh, I thought, oh, yes, I remember this. Uh, They circled, I think it was uh, somewhere around the border uh, of South Australia and Victoria. They had a DC-3 going around in circles. And uh, this chappy told me that uh, he was an amateur, actually. He said, oh, we pinched a few ideas out of the ARRL handbook and built up this transmitter. And what they were doing was receiving the signal from uh, presumably Channel 9 in in, um, Adelaide. Maybe it was Channel 7 in those days. Uh, And uh, they retransmitted it on uh, an unused channel in Melbourne. And I think it was Channel 6. Uh, It was received at Mount Dandenong on Channel 6, piped down to the studios, uh, and then um, sent back up again... um, uh, after it, you know, it had been mixed with audio commentaries and and whatever else, probably the advertisements. I just thought that was a great bit of history. In April 1977, the need for a stroke T identification was removed, and we all received a letter saying you can do away with your stroke T. <laughs> This brings us to the end of my story of amateur television during the 1970s, my journey. There are probably a few more stories which could be told and some which are best left untold. It was an interesting time. My logbook indicates that the last contact I made using amateur television was in January 1981 when I worked uh, Ian VK7ZIE in uh, Devonport, Tasmania. On the same page, I've noted that Channel 028 opened its transmitters in Melbourne on the 24th of October, 1980, at 6.30pm. This presentation was put together in 2012 for the Macedon Rangers Amateur Radio Club and has been suitably enhanced by Ian VK3QL. I hope you've enjoyed this story. 7-3.